from fact to fiction. Willie bought a mouse and then forgot he'd bought it and got given a fright by it. My name is Tim Key and I'm a poet. My remit this evening is pretty simple. If you're not familiar with the show, then I'll explain its ethos. A writer, in this case me, follows the news for a week and then transforms a news story into a work of fiction. Ideally, once that process is over, people listen to it. These people are called Radio 4 listeners. In all likelihood, that's where you come in. You're a Radio 4 listener, or you're certainly behaving like one. So I've been keeping tabs on the news this, uh, this week, and I've found a story which really enthused me. So I've written a poem about it. And I'd be thrilled to read it to you. And that's your cue to play your guitar. Mm -hmm. I should mention I'm joined by my colleague, Tom Basden. You should say hello there, Lord. Oh, hello. You don't need to stop playing to say hello. Okay. It's not a harmonica. Hello. The poem is a comparative analysis of two centre backs. <coughs> John Terry, that steely hunk of beef who barks orders to the lads on the pitch and says done instead of did off it, snogged his wag bye bye on his glittery porch. His freshly pressed shell suit slid onto his leather seat and his car said, hello, John. His wife kissed him through the window and then kissed the car itself and then slunk back into the mansion. Terry rolled the car around the fountain and away. And then I'd appreciate it if you'd play something more Andorran whilst I talk about the Andorran centre-back Ildefons Lima. Are you, you're not... Are you seriously doing it all about England Andorra? Their music has something in common with Catalan folk music. Hmm. Ildefons stood at the bus stop his trusty sports bag sat at his feet, the suede glistening in the rain. In it were his boots, proper ones with studs, his shin pads, autograph book and lunchbox, and on his lunchbox, a Frank Lampard sticker. He bit his lip because he hadn't technically taken the time off work. The bus came into view. His spine tingled with excitement. I'm not sure you should be doing a poem about Andorra versus England. Mm. Have you had your way? Well, no, it's supposed to be about current affairs. Uh, mate, this was four days ago. doesn't get much more. Yeah, I know, but you need to be writing about, you know, Europe and stuff, like the right-wing parties getting... G g Guitar. And I don't think we need you chipping in. I'm just trying to help. Just to clarify, Lord's here, Lord is contracted, solely to play the guitar. Terry strode into his changing room, and he had his manservant dress him. Then he high-fived Lamps and Rooney and sat in the corner reading his Grisham. Capello asked him why he was yawning. Ah, you know, he said, smirking. And Dora, innit? He adjusted himself in his shorts and winked at Stuart Pearce. And now the Andorran music, please. Ildefons lurched forward into the away changing room and fainted. His brother Tony, also a defender, revived him, and then he sat, gaping in wonder at the splendour. Everyone had their own peg. There was a bath and a shower. He put his ear to the wall. He could hear Beckham's distinctive tones, talking about the wire. He felt lightheaded again and sat back on the bench and started picking mud off his boots. Just out of interest, can you stop playing? Can you stop playing? Mm -hmm. Why are you wearing sports kit? Oh, um, just I'm more comfortable. You're more comfortable playing the guitar in? Yeah. Well, that might. doesn't explain the badminton racket. No, they're the same shape, aren't they? So that's more comfortable for you if there's two things in the room that are the same shape? Yeah, just like feng shui. I think you're dodgy. I think you should talk about the BMP. Or I think you should play your guitar rather than... Mm. <clears throat> Terry stood in line, mm -hmm. blasting out the anthem. In fact, you may as well uh, play the national anthem there. Ildefon's legs were jelly. He was jabbering, barely holding it together. He tried to sing along to the anthem. It was the English one, but Ildefon's didn't mind. He was singing with his heroes. 
He could almost reach out and touch Frank Lampard. In a minute, the match would start, and then he'd be able to. Why have you got your hand up? Well, I want to ask, why, why did you choose this story? The underdog, isn't it? Fascinating. I've always had a soft spot for the underdog. Mm, yeah, but... I like to when Buster Douglas knocked out Mike Tyson. Well, this is what I was going to say. That's an example of when the underdog wins. Or Wimbledon beating Liverpool. Again, that's... Or, a uh, bit different, I suppose, but your BNP. No, well, hang on. One, it's not, it's not my BNP. And two, yes, of course that's different. A small party, though, aren't they? No, but it's different. Pe people weren't voting BNP because they love an underdog. But different people think in different ways, Lord. You're talking to a man who wrote to Eddie Edwards. Well, that's, that's not the... Eddie the Eagle Edwards doesn't have a conviction for inciting racial hatred. I have no idea what Eddie's criminal record does or does not include. You should find out before I, you I like think, them. Lord, when push comes to shove, you struggle... Look at me. You struggle when I get political. What? what? Please play your guitar. Terry planted his great leathery forehead on the ball and propelled it into the night. And then he winked at Jolie and Lescott and they chatted about girls whilst their midfield friends advanced. What's happened there? I'm just having a drink. Why are you opening a can of Red Bull? Well, I like Red Bull. That doesn't wash. I like smoking menthol cigarettes, but I don't light up when you're strumming that bad boy. Do you want a can? Put it on the table. OK. And how did you open it whilst you're still playing guitar? Um. Ildefons was all at sea. His eyes were wide like dinner plates, and his tongue was lolling out of his mouth. There was Rooney and Stevie G, and now Beckham. It was too much. Overwhelmed by the occasion, he lay down in the centre circle and tried to take it all in. He resolved to make the most of it all. He sprung to his feet and sidled up to Lampard, and he cuddled him. What are you doing, fella? Lampard asked. Ildefon smiled a toothy grin. No, seriously, what are you doing, fella? I'm a footballer too. Ildefon's bowed deeply. Glenn Johnson crossed. Rooney scored. It's half time. What? Play your guitar. Right. Ildefon's blew into the England changing room without knocking. John Terry didn't even look up. He was concentrating on his Vaseline. Just a quick one. Ildefon's could barely speak. Go on said Capello. Uh, well, continued Ildefons, just to say you should be absolutely thrashing us. Mr Capello nodded, importantly. Andorra were 3-0 down with goals from Rooney, too, and Lampard. I mean, we are useless, he clarified. Capello removed his glasses. You're playing OK, Sonny, he said. Ildefons blushed. I work in a blast furnace, he said. He bowed and left. I mean, even, you know, just even talk about Ronaldo. Well, what about Ronaldo? He went for 80 million quid. Mm, that is dear. Get about 130 grand a week. I mean, uh, just to reiterate, I wasn't coming at it from a point of view of policies, you know. What? What I say about the BNP. Oh, well, I mean, your politics are none of my it's business. It's just I have a natural bent for the underdog, and I think, I guess the romantic in me. Well, I don't think the BNP getting into power is a romantic notion. Oh, no, no. But, I mean... Didn't a part of you want Andorra to win? Mm. <laughs> Even though it would have been dreadful for England. Oh, well, a different type of dreadful. I'm sorry, I didn't know there was more than one type of dreadful. Then you're out of your depth. Well, or I'm living the dream. There are two ways of looking at everything. John Terry brought the ball down neatly on his mighty, fiercely patriotic chest, and he winked at Lescott. Here, watch this. Then he set off on an amazing dribble, striding round the Andorans as if they weren't there. He was singing and clapping his hands above his head. It was as if they didn't exist. But Ildefons did exist. And now he came. His large frame, uncoordinated, enthusiastic. He held his breath and launched himself at the England captain. Ali up, he yelled. And he won the ball. And he blasted it upfield. And his jaw dropped 12 inches. And he could not believe what he'd done. Um, also... I might need to leave a little early. Why? Uh, my uncle. My uncle's sick. He's really. You, he's, you, he's, you may as well just say you're going to play badminton with Rick, if that's what you're doing. Mm. Say it then. Yeah, I'm. I'm meeting Rick. The show's only fifteen minutes long, mate. I arranged to meet him a bit early. Yeah, but you can't leave a fifteen-minute long thing early. I've not heard of that. Text. Say you'll be late. I won't be late. Oh. Court's booked. Uh, uh. Please, guitar. Buoyed by his tackle on Terry, 
Ildefons was now 100% out of control. He sprinted from one hero to the next. He showed Ashley Cole photos of his wife and kids. He tried to get Crouch to do his dance. He asked the ref to take a photo of him with Stevie G. When Defoe scored his second, England's fifth, Ildefons became very emotional. What must that be like, he thought. And he spent the next five minutes jogging around after him to ask him. And 60,000 people bayed. In, in fact, 60,000 people for Andorra versus England. That is pretty good. Mm. I mean, I was thinking about this. A lot of stuff in the news about voter apathy. Yeah. Funny that people sometimes get their act together to beat a small nation at football, but can't quite have the energy to keep the BNP out. Yeah, do you have a point? Uh, yeah, just nationalism, I think. Good point. Hmm. I suppose you're starting to see why England and Andorra is important. Sure am. Ildefons was pestering Lampard to swap shirts with him. Lampard was having none of it. The referee blew for full time, 6-0, and Lampard agreed to swap shirts. Ildefons grinned his toothy grin and asked to swap shorts as well. Lampard jogged away, back to his life. JT plodded over to Jolie and Lescott and woke him up. Come on, sleepy. Wake up. We're done. And Ildefons ran to the Andorra fan, wearing his new shirt. This was the best day of his life. Oh, that's cute. Cheers. B building nicely. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> oh. 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 I've got a jip off, I'm afraid. Ah, oh, mate. Yeah, uh, sorry. I mean, is there no way? I mean, this will take about another one minute maximum. Well, I did tell you earlier. You are voter apathy, mate. What does that mean? Um, can you leave your guitar? You don't play. Well, to be fair, it really doesn't look difficult. If you can't write an incisive piece about the news, I don't imagine you'll be able to play that. Charming. Time will tell. I mean, well, good luck with it. I'll... I'll be listening on my. I'll be listening on my. Um... Oh, oh. Hell's bells. That's... Hell's bells. That's... So is that me on the radio? So is that me yeah. on the radio? Oh, yeah. oh, 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 there we are. Oh, well, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for tuning in. Right. Good luck. Bye, mate. Bye, mate. Bye. Right. Got to keep it together. Just an epilogue, anyway. John Terry gave it some down the motorway. He was listening to Wings and wearing a suit. He overtook a mini and gave the old Doris the bird. But he caught himself in the wing mirror and he checked himself. He let her overtake him back and he thought about the Andorans. Ildefons crept up the garden passage. He moved his key to the lock. The key trembled with the excitement of it all. Ildefons remembered his tackle on Terry and smiled, and he tugged at the hem of Lampard's shirt, and he eased his key into the lock in hushed instalments, and soundlessly opened the door. But they'd heard, and the girls came hurtling down the stairs and leapt into his arms, and the missus turned on the lights and threw pizza into the oven, and they danced into the lounge, and they pressed play, and our hero grinned his toothy grin, and they watched him, defending heroically, against the mighty English. <laughs> <laughs>